Hello, I'm Lucy Kane from MD of Time and Leisure magazine and today I've teamed up with Esther Stanhope who is the impact guru. As ever, we're expecting a really fun webinar lunchtime session with Esther who's going to be giving us some brilliant tips on how to ace your Zoom meetings and how to look good and, and feel good on camera. So um, Esther, welcome. Thank you very much, Lucy. It's really, really good to see you. I'm going to put both of us on the screen for a moment before I share my screen. And welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching us live, please do use the chat function and Lucy's going to be reading it and sharing it with me. And you can use the Q&A. We'll have time for Q&A at the end. If you're watching a recording, sit back, get yourself a glass of something bubbly and enjoy the ride so today is all about how to ace your remote meetings or well we're doing it on zoom today and i i quite often just say zoom and we all know what we're talking about who would have thought that to zoom or not to zoom who would have thought that zoom would be a verb um <laughs> anyway today <laughs> but today is really all about the last few months we've all done it you've seen it done well you've seen it done badly I was actually quite nervous about engaging with my audience on camera. So today is all about looking good, sounding good and feeling good on camera. And even if you've been to one of my masterclasses before, and even if you've, you've, you know more or less how to do it, you can always learn something new. Every time you go on air and live, do you find this Lucy? Every time you go, on, you go live, you learn something new. Oh, totally. I mean, I, I, Esther, I love that picture of you and your rollers. I mean, I have to say, <laughs> you know, in, in a few months I've been doing this, I have, that's, that was me at the beginning, not even looking as good as that, but, you know, kind of underprepared. So you do learn something and it's actually, it does help, but actually getting your tips and ideas and feedback really helped me the most. So I think you do learn a bit, but the more you can kind of framework it and, and kind of know what you're doing and why you're doing it uh, gives you a a big, much bigger boost. You know, it was really funny. The other day I was working with a client and he was saying that when he does his big company meetings, he starts his meeting exactly at 59 seconds past the hour. And I said, why is that? Don't you tune in early? You know, it's always good to tune in early in case you know, things go wrong. So we tuned in and when we tuned in earlier, I, Lucy didn't have a link. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just a classic example of, of going to a remote meeting. Anyway, so I said to, to this guy, why do you tune in a, a minute past? He said, I tune in exactly at the time because I don't really like the start. I don't like the start of the meeting. That's the so best bit, you, though, isn't it? What's that? <laughs> that's the best bit, isn't it? You know, that sort of... Small talk. Going. It's small talk. And somebody wrote on Twitter the other day, has Zoom... A ruined small talk so that's what this is all about small talk just a really quick tip there before we even start how do you start a zoom meeting or a teams meeting or a blue jeans meeting a really quick tip there is there is a soft start and then there's a real start so if you tuned in before we pressed record you would have seen that we did a bit of a soft start where chit chat small talk welcome people in but but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put people in a waiting room until one minute passed I think you could potentially annoy them so remember, soft start, hard start. Good luck with that. But I mean, what have we seen over the past few months? I mean, my, one of my favorite um, daily Zoom posts that I, that I read was when the boss turned herself into a potato, couldn't turn herself back. <laughs> I mean, how? I mean, is it possible to turn yourself into a potato? Clearly, yes. Yes, obviously, yeah. <laughs> And then on the right, the right hand picture here, we can see the, the guy, the Welsh in, in the Welsh assembly. Here's what I would call a mic up muck up. And if you didn't read, the, it went viral where he did this really important government meeting and then he didn't realise his mic was up. And after the meeting, he went, I can't say it, but F, what a stupid woman, rah, 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 and ranted and said this F word in public and then it went viral how embarrassing and because my background's broadcasting you can imagine when i was at the bbc many times people left their mic up and i've got some really bad stories that maybe i'll tell you another time when we're not in public <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love the potato picture and i think that's a real classic isn't it where you know your background has been uh, has been transformed by your child who's been using your zoom call or yeah uh, you know and it's a birthday message to one of their you know all of those things it's just that little bit of prep 
really get into <laughs> um, five minutes of prep or 10 minutes of prep, making sure that you're ready to start actually stops that potential awkward start to a meeting, right? Absolutely. So people have been sending me their daily Zoom updates and my friend um, designed this tabloid banner for me, which I thought was hilarious. So this week, what was the daily Zoom? Oh yeah, somebody told me about, there's a Twitter account dedicated to your credibility bookshelf check. <laughs> How <laughs> credible are you from your bookshelf and your background? Oh, interesting. Uh, and then I, so I Googled it and a friend of mine in Germany said, in Germany, bookshelf cardboard, cardboard bookshelves, like flat, fake bookshelves are selling like hotcakes in the supermarket in Munich. And then I Googled it and then on Amazon, apparently you can buy all these different bookshelf wallpaper. So I think, I think some people are cheating. Our own screens, really. Yeah, it's just so funny, isn't it? That people are putting book, fake bookshelves behind them. <laughs> So, so I'm quite used to the studio environment. My, I've been in broadcasting for many years, but it's funny. I still felt absolutely terrified the first time I had to do a, a large scale remote masterclass. You know, I'm not a born confident person and people think, oh, it's all right for you, Esther. You worked in television. You're confident. But actually, I did not feel very confident and I used to be terrified of cameras. So I know what it's like to feel exposed and naked in, in front of the camera but I have learnt from being a producer and being a senior producer for many years at the BBC and on um, television programs I've learnt the tips that you need in order to pull off a relatively good performance <laughs> and that is what we're being asked to do now we're being asked to broadcast from our own homes and this is going to be this is a long-term skill that we're going to need now we all need it so i'm going to give you loads of tips today we're going to do eight top tips but first of all i'd really like to know from you i'm going to i'm going to launch a poll i'm going to launch a poll which is if you were to give yourself a rating out of 10 for your i've got i'm going to have to look down here and, and launch my poll there you go look i'm going to launch it tell me if it comes out lucy oh, yes. um, a rating out of 10 how confident are you when it comes to remote meetings and your on air Zoom performance. Your wow, Zoom that's performance. really interesting. We've got a four come in straight away. Oh, yes. Five, six, sevens, eights. Yes. Have we got any tens? Nobody's a ten. Oh, oh. Um, So, yes. Yeah, so, people are, so you're saying that quite, six is quite popular, five is just below six. Okay. So, the average is probably about six out of ten. Good. So, that means. That, oh, I'm going to share the results with you. That was, that was the, if I can just scroll up there. So that's our little mini poll, about six out of 10. So do you know what that means? That means that you need to be better at Zoom meetings. You've got to be better at on-air meetings. And I think after this session, you could be eight out of 10, but I don't think I'm going to do a poll at the end. I might wait for you to email me afterwards after you've tried it out. Because you're only going to know when you tried it out. So it'd be interesting um, to know where we start and where we're going to end up at the end, by the end yeah. of the next, our next Zooms. Absolutely. So I would like to know um, if you could use the chat function and speak to Lucy on the chat, or all panellists is fine. If you could use the chat function, I'd love to know what are you afraid of or what are your remote fears or what do you most want to know from this session? Is it nerves? Is it lighting? Is it positioning? Is it engagement? What are, you, what are your what ifs? Like, what if I can't see their body language? What if I'm flustered and floundering? What if they hate me? <laughs> what, what are your biggest fears and what ifs? And what would you most like to get out of this session? It's really, really helpful for us because I, I know I'm going to cover most of that stuff in the tips. But um, I'd love to know, I'd love to get some feedback from you um, oh, from your personal experience. Um, so Maggie said it's not being able to gauge reactions. Pauline has mentioned she can't read body language and um, how to create a connection with others, not being heard and having impact. So actually there's a really common thread here that people are sort of really finding it difficult to connect with people at the other end of the screen. And how do they, you know, have a normal conversation when you've got this sort of slightly awkward screen in front of you and you can't really judge people as well. So. Uh, that's quite interesting. We've also got positioning, which um, I presume is camera positioning or yeah. how to put yourself in the screenshot properly. Positioning your head on screen, positioning yourself on screen. And also, 
also where to look. This is so, quite an often a shot that I see, Esther. Oh, you know yes. that? Are you familiar with that? That's yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the Humpty Dumpty forehead look. <laughs> I've got we've got all we've got people that have gone Crusoe. We've got the Robinson Crusoe Humpty Dumpty. That's a that's a brilliant one. That is. That? We've also got the um the serial you know the serial killer look or the witness protection program with the win window behind you look. That's I'm going to be covering all that. <laughs> Excellent. We'll keep your questions and your comments coming. We are going to be covering most of that in in the main tips. Plus, we'll be spending time on your questions at the end. So please do keep them coming i can see some questions are coming in lucy if they're relevant um bring them in early but or we can save all the questions and until the end yeah. but just a quick note before we go on to the tips of how to engage where to look how to position your camera and how to engage body language um just a quick note just to say why video is so important and i i've known that video video is coming i've known that video has been on the cards for a long time in terms of I work with major organizations. I work with the big, uh, the big four, with, with big accountancy firms. I work with banks. And I've known their plans, their software plans, and their beautiful equipment and their beautiful processes and setups with their WebEx screens and their, their amazing conference suites. Um, so they've been planning video for a long time for that to really be part of business. However, up until COVID-19 hit, people weren't really, well, they weren't really doing it. And if they were doing it, they weren't doing it very well. <laughs> I think what happened with COVID-19, everyone just had to throw themselves into it and just put their dirty washing in the background, be an egg at the bottom of the screen. Um, but one of the reasons why video is so powerful, just a quick stat here really, is in the advertising world, in the UK, for example, Advertising on television is five times more expensive than advertising on radio. So I think it's about seven pounds fifty cost per thousand to advertise on television. It's only about one pound fifty cost per thousand to advertise on radio. So video and the medium of moving pictures has always been seen as powerful and something that will enhance your business. So these are some of the these are the, some of the things I hear all the time. Worried that the tech will fail. I hate the lens. I hate seeing myself on camera. Um, how can I engage if I can't look them in the eye? Thank you. We've had that one already. And then how do you know when to speak or how to interrupt? So have we got any more what ifs, Lucy? Um, Lucy, what's your what if? Oh, my what if. So I think my biggest what if was, uh, yeah, I think I always get a bit scared when I have to share a document. I feel that sort of like panic of, I've got to fiddle around with some buttons and, and you know, it makes me feel a bit flustered. So that is something that, it always fills me with a little bit of anxiety if I know that's coming up. And right. that's something that's come up from Suzanne and Melinda. So Suzanne's raised technical issues. So switching from one document to another. And Melinda um, has asked, you know, what if your system crashes? Oh. oh. <laughs> you know, something oh. That's outside of your, even your technical experience, you know, you've, it's something you've got to deal with. You know, what do you do in that situation? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I haven't necessarily got got a a, a big uh, long slide uh, PowerPoint slide deck about what if your what if your system crashes. All I can say is you're not alone. <laughs> this happens. We're in a technical world where things go wrong. When I was at the BBC, it crashed regularly, and we were on air, live on air. Right. That's terrifying. Yeah. It was. I mean, I think you just get used to it. At the BBC, we had this thing where. If in doubt, if something really bad happens, but you can play a track, always have Bohemian Rhapsody ready because it's five minutes, 55 seconds. <laughs> um, ultimately, there, there are several options and you've got to think really quickly. So one is look, abort mission, reboot. That would be one option. Another option would be get your, buy some time. You need some time. So you could say, I need two minutes. This is my system's crashed, guys. Take a break. I'll see you back here in... <laughs> Uh, it's mainly time that you need and it's mainly a couple of minutes that you need so if you build in emergency safety nets that that might stop you worrying about it but, a, but you're not alone that that's really that's really the main look so there we are talking about going from document to document and then my slides go backwards <laughs> but let, let's head into the we've already had some tips already about starting um about system crashing and having safety nets but let's i've, I've picked out my top eight 
tips about how to ace your Zoom meetings. I've picked out eight because I've actually got a thousand tips. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've merged some of them together. Yeah. But I thought, you know, you're not, you don't want a thousand tips in one go. So I thought I'd give you eight tips and then you can ask questions. Um, right. and, and we can have a bit of fun with this as well. And these are the top tips that will make a tangible difference immediately. So let's start with our first four tips. And th these are my favorite, favorite tips because just, they're super simple and they will change the way that you look and sound on video immediately. This is an immediate upgrade. Okay, so you know where they say system upgrade, I'm going to upgrade you right now. So get ready to install, all right? So it starts with lens, L-E-N-S. Love the lens. So L is love the lens. Now, what does that mean? Love the lens. Okay, well, the first thing I'm going to get you to do, and Lucy, you're going to join in. Okay. Is, I, and I know that Anne Taylor, I know that you're tuning in, Anne. Well, I got you to do this the other day. The first thing I'm getting you to, going to get you to do is identify your camera lens. So point, get your finger and point at your lens. Point, point at your lens, okay? See that lens? See your finger on it? Check if you've, if you've got a little window. Of, you might not have a window of your, of your face on it yet, if you're on webinar mode. Okay, point at the lens. That, that is where you need to look when you're on a video call. And I know it's really weird because it's a dot. That is where you need to be looking. So a really good way to remember that is as a little story behind um, one of my little tips I've taken. I've stolen from the late, great Scylla Black. I actually interviewed her once when I was an entertainment reporter. She's amazing. Like, she was wearing a mint green suit and it was for comic relief. But the story behind Scylla Black and her lens and her love of the lens, um, it was well known in the television industry that she loved her former husband, her, her, well, he died, her husband called Bobby. She was in love with him. And she used to call camera one when they were rec recording Blind Date. She used to call camera one Bobby because she oh. loved Bobby. Yeah, so, so this is her relationship with camera one. Like, oh, hello. Hi. How are you? I love you. I love you. I can tell you a secret. So she treated camera one like her love of her life. So 18.4 million people at home felt that she loved them. <laughs> uh, it's so lovely because she really did always um, have that amazing warmth on, on camera. And so that's the secret, isn't it? It's where the camera makes us feel a bit frozen and a bit sort of intimidated. Actually, you have to kind of feel much more like it's a person and so that we end up relating to I guess our audience at the other end of who we're talking to. Absolutely. So my question to you, Lucy, for you as well, my yeah. question to you is, what's your lovely lens called today? Well, <laughs> I'm I saying today it. because <laughs> would I call mine Adam? Mm, I might look a bit angry. <laughs> if I call my lens Adam after my husband, I might get a bit angry today. So I might not call my lens Adam today. Today, I mean, yes, the other week I did a... Uh, one uh, session and the most popular name. Guess what the most popular name is? Guess what it is, Lucy? An actual name. That's... Yeah, yeah. Guess what people want to call their lens? Think of uh, like the. Mo it's actually a male. It was mainly for women. The audience of women. Oh, as they call like their lens. Uni or something. It was actually Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been calling my lens Brad for a couple of days now. So please tell me what you would call your lens. Oh, I've heard all kinds of names over the last few weeks. It's, it's hilarious. Um, people's dogs, Bentley, I've had T Dolores, um, Cyril, uh, Tiddles, <laughs> you name it. Um, I, I've heard it. So um, have, have we got any names coming through? Let's see if we've got, not at the moment, but yes, do tell us your names and put them on there and I will share. Yeah. I so was... if you think about the name that you would call your lens and put it in the chat box and tell Lucy what you might call your lens. Oh, oh we've got confident. one coming through, Suzanne, very, very mature, Sean Connery. Oh, very. That's <laughs> Bond. Melinda has called out Alfie the cat. Oh. And Maggie likes a tie, Jon Snow. Really? 
yeah, met him in real life. Obviously, I, have you met him in real life? <laughs> I have, but I don't know about Maggie. Yeah, Maggie, have you ever met John Snow in real life? He's it's quite easy to track down. Just wait outside the ITN building. Oh, he's got, <laughs> in, oh no, 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 from Game of Thrones. Ah, I thought you meant the news so. presenter. I'm not a fan. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Quite a different image. Quite a different image. So, so you like Jon Snow? You know, so we've got a graph coming in. So Veronica has said CB. I'm I'm wondering if that's a, a pet. We've got a Tiddles from Hanukkah and and Lenny. Uh, Maggie's still laughing at, uh, <laughs> <laughs> at our response. The news reader. That's so hilarious. And okay, so let, well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll pick up some more of those names um, at the end as well when we're doing our, our Q&A. So cause I, I'm only on tip two and we've got eight tips and I, I really want to share them with you. So, so the main thing about the tip one, which is love the lens, if there's one thing that you're going to take away today, that, that. Love the lens. That's it. Okay, tip two, very simply, is my hashtag. Eyes and teeth. You and know what they used to say in the 1970s? I'm not going to say <laughs> not, it. Not anymore, um, not anymore. Eyes and teeth. Click. Smile. Smile, smile, smile. If you smile, it will make you look better, feel better, because your brain thinks that you're happy. It makes you look relaxed. It makes you look as if you've got this. It makes you look effortlessly confident. And also it does the science behind the smile. It actually does, it helps your voice. When you smile, you have a much more relaxed lower palate um, and it's much better for your voice. And you can, you can actually change your voice just by smiling. So it's really important. And the camera really picks up on your eyes and on your facial expressions, probably more than in real life because we've only got this view of you. So if you're studying somebody, if you watch yourself back, you can really see when you're slightly worried, grimacing on the back foot, a little bit, you know, you've got that anxiety. And when you're smiling, you look relaxed and you look effortlessly confident. So it, there's not one downside to smiling. And you don't want to smile too much, but, you know, just your face going this way. In some ways, it's easier than it sounds, though, because sometimes when we feel on camera, we feel lots of nerves and uh, less like we want to smile. So you know it, it's quite a skill in some ways Esther have you got any tips for when you're feeling like you just don't want to smile you're feeling nervous um do you do you just force yourself to smile what what do you do yeah that's a really really good question because when you when you're feeling nervous but I mean there's nothing worse than a nervous face on camera right yeah I agree. see a nervous face um so you really have to try you have to concentrate on you've got to try and relax and th and even if your face is cracking <laughs> cracking that <laughs> smile it makes so much it actually does almost break down the nerves because you have to relax this part of your face when, when you smile so you if you have to fake it you have to fake it a little bit but if you can try and think of something that makes you smile so if in doubt think of your boss as a potato <laughs> what <laughs> you know the woman that was a potato she the boss that was a potato on the zoom call oh yes yes, so yes the potato boss if i think of a boss as a potato it makes me laugh absolutely laugh uh, we've got another question coming in from sophie <coughs> who's a lawyer and she mm -hmm. says i can't smile during remote court hearings what's a tip for that situation so you can't you can't smile during court hearings but obviously they must be carried out on zoom so um Okay, well, here's the thing. Okay, so the smiling, as in, hee hee, woohoo. And then, and then there's almost like a trained, if you were, if you, even if you're a trained vocal, if you train your voice, you can still, your face can still have a slight smile. To, it relaxes your jaw just a little bit. And, you, you know, it's, it's really smiling rather than grimacing. That, that's really the, the tip here. Just by having everything going upwards rather than downwards will give you a much better voice and make you feel more, more confident. Oh, you're absolutely right. You don't want to look like an idiot. You don't want to be like, hi, how are you? Yeah, this is great. And it's not great at all. And if it's serious, it's still, I, I see what you mean. You don't want to look, you don't want to look like you're making fun of the situation, but just your face going this way, your mouth slightly smiling and, and your 
eyebrows going upwards. It, it makes a lot of difference to your voice. That's the main tip here. But you're absolutely, absolutely right. You do, you don't, it's it's got to be in context and it's got to be appropriate. Yes. And it's from someone who hates their smile and teeth. If you hate your smile, all I can say is your audience love it. <laughs> there you go. So here's my little science behind the smile. The zygomatic major nerves, when they face up, your brain thinks that you're more relaxed and it does um, soften your lower palate, which is much better for your voice. So if you kind of bring your, your mouth up, like that, you have a much better voice. Um, okay, tip three is N, which quite simply stands for noise, um, which is, it's an obvious one, but a real quick fix tip. By and large, if you have a large group of people on a Zoom call or a Teams call or a Blue Jeans call, make sure they're on mute unless they're talking. <laughs> That's it. That's the tip. Okay, just a couple of extra things about noise. I actually do have quite good, I've done things here to mitigate background noise. Because quite often people say, my kid's making a noise, my dog, my, my. the other day there was literally a farmyard in the background of a banker. <laughs> I was having a meeting and there was, there was a cockerel going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I could kind of hear moo. It was crazy. And because we're all working from home and working from random locations. Um, so I've actually got a microphone here. You can see it's a Rode microphone. I'm happy to send you any kit requests after this. I've got a little mini studio, how to set your little studio up. That looks great. That's really so I've got little little Acoustic the sound beat. tiles on there. Acoustic sound tiles. I've got a curtain behind me. Literally, it's just a white curtain that I sewed, I sewed up myself with um with with curtain rings um and this little camera you can move it around i can actually clip it on on things if i want to so um so actually really just getting a half decent microphone half decent camera doesn't cost more than a hundred pounds uh, within a couple of hundred pounds you can get quite good um, shots lights and microphones lights camera action um so the, the main rule of thumb though is the reason why you want to have um, acoustic sound tiles or a smaller space like this is because you can control the environment and i think if you're going to be doing a lot of zoom calls or meetings going forward why not create a little mini environment where you know it's going to sound good and look good and it's going to be well lit which brings me on to s in lens which is shot so the kind of things I've been seeing, dirty oh. washing. That was actually a really senior client. I said, move out of the way, I've got to take a picture of your washing. Because you <laughs> literally put the camera on with your dirty washing. And, and one of my favorites was an unmade bed with knickers on it. <laughs> oh, that's an absolute like, Don't have an unmade bed in your background. You know, it, what does that say about you? Hi, welcome to my boudoir. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and this just makes me laugh so this guy on the left James he's like a really technical very senior guy a technician guy and like he tunes in with a, a window behind his head and washing a window behind him and washing and his head at the bottom of the screen so it lights terrible, doesn't it? lights camera action so here's a really good tip for you really really good tip so eyes a third of the way down the screen. So imagine that you've got a line, a third of the way down the screen here. Imagine you've got a line, and then line your eyes up to a third. Line your eyes up to that line. That will make a massive difference. Now, if it's a long shot or a mid shot, which is, let me see if I can, I can't, I can't fit in here, it's so small. If it's a kind of long shot, you, you still want to line up your eyes. If it's a close up shot, now I can't see my own shot, but if it's a close up shot, it's still about the eyes. It's not about headroom or where your positioning of your, how much body you're putting in. It's all about where you line the eyes up and you'll, you'll have a good shot if more or less the eyes are, are, are in, in par with this line, this imaginary line. That is already gonna make you look better. If you want to look a little bit, let's say, a bit, a bit more of a flattering shot, let's say, um, don't have a shot below chin height have a shot above chin height. <laughs> so do you see my camera's a little bit above chin height? I'm actually cheating. I think a camera person would say it's possibly a bit high, but that's because I know, I, I, I know it's more flattering. I, I can't help it, okay? 
I so, guess also, if you've got a good angle, you you feel more confident about uh, when you're on camera. You you've automatically taken out that sort of one thing the way you sort of end up looking at yourself thinking oh I look terrible and that's quite distracting isn't it so if you've got your good you know your good angle set up uh it really helps so I love that idea of it being slightly above the angle we can do yes. that yes slightly they, above chin height I mean because how many times have you seen people tuning in and they're literally looking down at their mobile with some window behind them and some horrible ugly well not ugly but just you know doors and kitchens and light switches well, we've seen up a lot of people's noses, haven't we, in the last few months? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's it. if you've got any questions specifically about that, please fire away. We can save some of them till the end, but um, please fire away your, your comments and, and questions. We may have to um, save some of them till the end, so we can okay. so we can um, do the, the the final couple of tips. So I, I have actually got a crib sheet, a cheap a cheat sheet. For my mini 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 studio if you're interested and i'll put that in the slides we'll share these after the session um tip five is engage with your audience so it is difficult to engage when you can't see the body language but i'm afraid via zoom and remote meetings you have to compromise if you want to engage with your audience i cannot tell you the power of eye contact however when you're when you're giving that eye contact you're not giving the person you can't see them. So there is a compromise. If everybody did the rules correctly, i.e. everybody spoke into the lens and then talked and listened while the other person was talking into the lens, it would be perfect. But what I notice is that I talk to the lens and then I look down and I look at my guest and they're looking at me on the screen. So then I keep looking at the lens because I know they're not looking at the lens and it goes round and round. I happen to know that the next technological revolution will be cameras in screens. That's the most obvious next step, isn't it, for technology? But a really good rule of thumb, and I learned this really from broadcasting, is that, to be honest, audiences don't engage all the time. And when, it, when you're in a kind of screen situation, audiences are much more likely, they're more likely to behave like they would in front of any television screen or any computer screen. And, and the rule of thumb here really is every six minutes, just have a rule of thumb. It's, it's just a rule of thumb. It's not a, a perfect running order. Um, every six minutes, your audience are likely to get their virtual remote control and switch off. So a really, a really good tip there would be every six minutes, do something a bit different. Change the pace, change the voice. So I've got the lovely Lucy that can, you know, and, and, and the reason I can, and I'm finding this, really engaging today because I've got Lucy as my co-pilot today. Another really good tip. Have other voices coming in or maybe have an exercise, have some interactivity, have a picture that comes up, you know, just anything to, to change the pace. It's an obvious thing, but quite often when you, if you just transmit, if you just transmit and broadcast information for 45 minutes, you probably are 39 minutes too long. Uh, people switch off, right? If they can't, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really about being realistic. Um, oh, look, I've just changed that my slide. It's mm -hmm. about being realistic. Um, you know, people won't listen to a 45 minute transmission. And if you're going to transmit, um, you might as well pre record it or, or pre record it in chunks and give people information in chunks. So, um, a lot of people say, oh, how do I keep my audience winched on? Or, or they have a problem when they have a group meeting or the Monday meeting, for example. People aren't engaged. They haven't got their mutes on and they can hear the keyboards. You know, it, everyone's committing these Zoom crimes. Zoom crime. Keyboard. So it's probably because they've disengaged for a reason. So keep it short and keep it snappy and keep it engaging every six minutes. And um, the other thing is on, on different platforms, and you know, um, I'm just going to use Zoom for an example here. Um, they've got thumbs up, hand clap, raise a hand. They've got things, they've got mechanisms. So when you're in meeting mode, you can have a reaction from everyone. Everyone puts their thumbs up or everyone claps their hands. And, and just doing a, a poll, asking a question will change the pace. I was going to say, because today you've done lots of different things to keep us engaged and interested. So you really asked us lots of questions. You've had oh, I hope so, Lucy. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the poll was brilliant because we were all able to put our ideas down on that. 
Yeah. Uh, you and I can stop and have a chat every now and again. And, and also I've been able to interrupt you and yes. uh, put questions in from everybody who's, who's joined today. So there's been those, you've used lots of different sort of techniques to. Yes. And also I've been unsharing and sharing my screen, which actually it took me a while to do that. Unsharing and sharing. Skill, isn't it? Like you, you know, kind of getting used to managing your dashboard of things that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so much better to have a, a, a really big tip just from watching this today is have a co-pilot because when you've got two of you d doing it um, and you're both striving to the same goal, which is to keep people engaged and, and make it interactive, it's so much better than doing it on your own. And I'm very glad that I can just read the messages and pull them out for you. Yeah, I'm, so you're just having a bit of a I laugh, really. That. Yeah, absolutely. I've got the good job, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but it's great for me because it means that I, I, I can quickly look at my share button while you're talking as well. So tip six, very, very briefly, we could do a whole session on this. Hair, wardrobe, makeup. The tip oh. here is, do you know what the tip is? Yes, please. <laughs> That's it. Yes, please, hair, wardrobe, makeup. If you were going to go on the news, you'd turn up at the studio and they'd say, hi, get into hair, wardrobe, makeup. And they'd get you in hair, wardrobe, makeup. They go, messy, here's a bit of slap, a bit of loose powder that you might have seen me putting on earlier, which I probably need an extra, extra bit of loose powder. I tell you what, this is for men as well. If, there's, um, yeah, if men are worried about shiny heads, loose powder actually solves every problem because you can't really tell you're wearing it and it does stop the shine on the old head and forehead um, you, like, you have it handy there as well so that oh i have oh i have my this is my i've got perfume just in case you want to smell me but i know <laughs> we're gonna smell you my 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 red my red lippy here just in my emergency lipstick the point is and i'm wearing pink today um uh, my 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 exec stylist natasha muss on here she always says if in doubt wear red <laughs> but i'm just wearing something bright does look better on camera I've just got a picture of my, I've got a series of different jackets. You've got to dress to your own personality type. You don't want to dress like somebody else or dress because I wore bright red, you have to wear red. You, uh, but the colour does look better on camera. I'll tell you what doesn't look good on camera, all black. Because it does look as if you're going to a funeral. And black has no texture, it just goes black. The other, other colour that doesn't really work on camera sometimes, white. Because it kind of drinks up the light. And then your, your shirt goes really white and then the white balance goes a bit, depending on what camera it is. The white balance gets confused. Your shirt's bright. And then your face suddenly goes dark. <laughs> so yep. the colour is better than black and white. I a lot and realise that how awful white shirts look on camera. Because you're yeah. it, it, it just somehow it's, it's not a colour that we, we really engage with, is it? So um, I love your idea of having bright clothes ready to kind of right yeah just have a zoom wardrobe and then you have to go up to here look you can get away with it <laughs> you can even have it in your pajamas you actually on my daily zoom uh, my one of my articles somebody had sent me this thing the zoom suit i think it was a, a lawyer had created this zoom suit which finished here. <laughs> <laughs> and it had one cuff so you can only use one arm in your zoom meeting and the cuff only went that it was only covering that bit which is so hilarious a question so, for um, Sophie who said, I have to wear a black suit and white shirt. What colour um, shirt would you suggest instead of white? Um, do you, if, you have to wear, if you have to wear a certain costume, then, then absolutely you, you have to wear that. That's fine. Um, I would probably wear cream instead of white. If, if, you could, if you're allowed to wear an off-white, I would wear off-white on camera. It's much better than white. White confuses the camera. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, tip number seven is really quite simply be yourself. And as Oscar Wilde said, be yourself because everyone else is already taken. And <laughs> the reason why I'm, I've got this jar of very dirty jar of marmite <laughs> here is because sometimes we don't feel we can be ourselves. I mean, if you're doing a court hearing and you are playing a part, that's a little bit more tricky because it's, it's all about the context. It's about it's the appropriate being, it's being yourself in an appropriate setting. But what I found is that it's quite nerve wracking being on camera and people, people are trying to be perfect or trying to please everybody. But here's the truth. You will never please everybody all of the time. But the best thing you can do is be your authentic self. 
And when I first started doing these remote speaking masterclasses, I was afraid that I was going to mess it up. And I, I felt as if I, I couldn't quite relax into it. So I felt as if I couldn't really be myself. And then I realized, and then, and then also people would say, oh, you're not very good. Or somebody would say something horrible about me. <laughs> and then I realized there's always going to be somebody that, who doesn't like you. <laughs> you will get, um, you know, you might get criticism when you're online. You're more likely to get feedback, that kind of feedback when you're online rather than when you're live, because people won't say things like that to your face. Um, however, really the message here is, don't be afraid, be yourself. And the more you're, you're, you're being yourself, the better you're gonna be. And people appreciate you being authentic, warts and all. Don't try and be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. So, so, for, so don't try and be perfect and throw yourself into it. Seriously, get in front of that camera. I, that's my message, get in front of the camera and do it. Because you're never gonna be perfect. And the only way you're gonna get better is by letting it all hang out. Just be yourself, warts and all. It is quite hard, isn't it, to to, um, to kind of let go of that feeling when people are watching you. That, yeah. that sort of slight fear that can come in when you feel quite nervous that actually I'm being judged here. And so how do you get out of that sort of sense of, you know, I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to worry about what people are thinking of me and I'm just going to talk. And if it goes a little bit wrong, I can go with it. How do you kind of move from, from slightly fearful and judged to that? Yeah. Do you know what? The only way to do it is to do it okay. and do it today, do it tomorrow, do it on Thursday. Oh no, it's tomorrow, tomorrow is Thursday, do it on Friday, <laughs> do it on Saturday, do it on Sunday. Do it with your family, do it with your best friend, do it with a small group, do it with your, your relatives. Do it as many times as you can. This is a learnt skill. You can learn to be relaxed on camera. You can learn to, to use the, you know, I'm using these fancy little controls here. Um, I couldn't do it a few months ago. I wasn't that quick on the uptake. <laughs> In fact, I only moved to Zoom from another platform quite recently because I used to use GoToWebinar. It took me months to get my head around GoToWebinar. And then every time I put it off, I'd have to relearn it again. And, and quite often when I'm helping people with their public speaking and they say, oh, you know, I have to do this every quarter, every quarter I have to do the results. And I say, oh no, that's the worst thing to do if you've got nerves, public speaking nerves. Because basically every quarter means that you have a nightmare every, every three months you're having a nightmare. Because three months is too long to get used to it. So it's like you have to re-go really put yourself under that horrible glossophobic state, as in glossophobia, the fear of public speaking. Which brings me on to my competition. You can win a signed copy of my book today, right now. And if you're watching live, you can win it in the next hour. If you're watching the recording, I always pick a winner out every Friday um, from people that have emailed me tips, please, um, in the week. Or, or, I mean, I, I actually have a kind of vat of tips, please, people. And I just pick a random winner every Friday so you can still take part. But the main thing is if you're watching live, if you, write, if you write tips, please, and email me, esther at estherstanhope.com. And Esther is spelled E-S-T-H-E-R. You just grab a copy up here, excuse me. Oh, I have to say that I love Esther's book. And actually, it has really transformed some of the, the uh, times when I've had to do some public speaking. It's not something that I love doing. But actually, since I, when I do, I quite often delve into Esther's book and pick out a few tips and uh, there's, always, there's always some brilliant things that make me just improve what I'm doing that bit more. And I think one of the best tips in there is to tell a story. I love that one. It honestly changed my uh, presentations uh, right. when I did I that. that. Look, magic starts with creative chunks. So actually, this is about public speaking. Goodbye, glossophobia, banish your fear of public speaking. But it's really... All the tips are 100% relevant to virtual hosting, virtual speaking, hosting a meeting, being on camera, because being on camera is a bit like shining a torch into your inner confidence. <laughs> That's how I used to feel. Um, and the camera, sometimes people behave as if the camera is an auditorium of 300 people. So, uh, so if you want to win my book, email me tips, please, and I will pick a winner out today by 2.30. There you go. By 2.30 today, I will pick a winner. So please get that email in immediately. Um, 
And if you write tips, please, I will send you my Friday tips. I, I, I have a mailing list. I send out tips every Friday. I send out video tips about voice, about engaging with people, about daily Zoom stories, and about what's going on and women in leadership and that sort of stuff. So if you want to get my Friday tips, please write tips, please. By the way, if you don't want to get my Friday tips, don't write tips, please, or email me. <laughs> no, don't send me them. <laughs> I, I don't know who wouldn't want them. I think it's brilliant. And there's also, they're always so fun and, and kind of instantly usable. So um, thank you. That, that's very exciting about the competition. Thank you. And then tip eight. So we're just coming into question time now. We've got, I can see Q&As. I can see the little red dot saying five Q&A so far. Yeah. So we want to get through as many as we can. But tip eight, and I've got some videos. I'm, I've created some little videos about this. Zoom fatigue. The tip, tip eight is actually... Don't be alarmed if you get mega tired and exhausted and drained on remote meetings, when you do remote meetings. A big tip here is don't fill up. I mean, I know we've done one till two. That's partly just so it's easy to remember. But, it, but actually, normally, I mean, this is, a, this is an event. This isn't just a meeting. This isn't any old meeting. This is an amazing time and leisure meeting. But normally... Don't fill up a whole hour with um, a remote call and then have another hour and then have another hour. It's really important that you have some time in between. What I found personally is when I'm helping somebody, if I'm actually in a coaching scenario, I need quite a big gap until I speak to the next person because I'm finding that there's, your brain is doing a lot of jobs at one time. Your brain's trying to work out what's going on. Is there body language? Is it working? How am I engaging? I'm, I'm on show the whole time. It's really quite exhausting for your brain. And I've spoken to neuroscientists and therapists and psychologists about this quite extensively. You do get way more tired doing remote meetings. So take breaks and try, you know, try and think about how you can reduce the, the time that you're on screen and how can you engage with your audience by doing less. So less work, more impact less zoom fatigue so that's that tip and now it's time for q a so please gather up all of the chat lucy all the things we haven't gone over yet look at yeah. the q a and then and then we can we can kick off with some of those questions well thank you esther i think that was just brilliant i mean i i've, I've got eight really good tips now i've written them all down i'm, I'm going to be going over them because i think there's just you can never have enough oh, new ideas on how to maybe do things a bit better. So thank you. I'm sure everybody else is really delighted with, you know, all the advice and tips you've given us today. So uh, I don't know if everybody can uh, give Esther a clap for that and a thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lucy. You've been an excellent co-pilot. I've loved it. But we've got we've My got pleasure. time now for a few questions. So Great. I know so, that uh, one of the um, I know one. I I have a question for you about Time and Leisure magazine. Oh yes, thank you. When's it next out? Uh, okay, so we have some really exciting news that we're going to be doing. We are kickstarting our publishing with in the summer edition. So that's going to be coming out mid July, and we've been on hold a little bit during the uh, crisis. And this, so this is our first publication back. It's going to be a sort of a special edition over the summer, which will we're talking. It's about a summer of inspiration. Some of the we, we're promoting some of the heroes, all the people who've been helping us out during this time, volunteering and doing amazing things in their community. We'll be talking about things that are opening locally so we're just so excited it's so good to be back and to be back in print as well as all of the amazing online stuff we're doing which has also been so fun during this time uh it's given us a chance to actually do stuff like this you know get involved in zoom and chat to people and i guess do a different sort of publishing but no it's great to be back with the summer edition how about you esther what are you going to be up to well, I've got a brand new, it's a, I'm going to call it summer school coming very soon, very, very soon. Um, speak like a she boss. So it's kind of like goodbye glossophobia, but it's particularly aimed at women leaders, people, women leaders, women in business that need to speak well. And I'm going to be doing it via Zoom and online. I'm going to have lessons and we're going to have a bit of a finale where you actually get to, to speak. So watch out for my emails, watch out for any any um, social media around that speak like a she boss I think maybe on, on the on the follow-up email to this I might send you my quiz what kind of speaker are you are you a Ooh. planarina Polly or a wing it Wendy 
Oh yes, I, 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 I'm a sort of not the wing. I'm the opposite one. The plan it out, and uh, and I, it's really helpful to get more tips to be less structured for me. So, I, I think this, that sounds amazing. It sounds like a brilliant sort of course, and I'm, I know as ever you'll probably make it really fun and engaging for everybody. So I can't wait to hear a little bit more about that. Actually, excellent. Well, yeah. let's get to let's get to the, these questions. I'm sure there's questions coming. I saw the yeah, I've got a question label questions I want to bring up which is about engagement and people who feel like the conversation is happening and they can't get um, into the conversation because other, pe other people are dominating it Ooh. so you know how do you and I'm just trying to find the actual question that has come from okay Caroline who I find it hard to be heard others dominate the discussion and Natasha, who said difficult conversations. Yes, okay, so difficult conversations. I would say that Zoom is not the best um, form of communication if it's kind of intimate or difficult because you can't really have a realistic, um, it's not like being in the room. As I would say there were certain intimate conversations. We, I've, I've talked about this um, in the past and I've spoken to people that are doing therapy and things like that. And actually, it might be quite good to, to consider just ch changing, changing the format a bit. So you might start with the video or maybe you don't put the video on at all. Maybe you put a, an image there and then you kind of treat it more like a phone call because actually phone calls can be much more intimate than video calls. So I would consider doing some of it and just turn the cameras off and have an image of something appropriate if, if, it want, if it's a one-to-one -one more intimate or just do a, a phone call. I don't think you can replicate real life in the room and if it's that sensitive I, I wouldn't use a zoom i wouldn't do it via zoom that's my answer to that one and, and the other one was, was, was not getting heard yes not getting heard so i would okay it's i agree it's hard and absolutely i hear so many stories about people not quite knowing when to interrupt and the loud ones are dominating i mean the best thing to do is to find out the next you can't do anything if, if you're out of control in that meeting it's gone couple of rules of thumb though. So for women, and I'll say this about a live meeting as well, do try and get your voice physically heard in the meeting early. Now, physically heard, so if you're on mute and, and there's eight other people, it's quite difficult to unmute like, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but the point is you need to physically get your voice heard. So people don't think, geez, that's weird. Why is she piping up? Um, if I were you, I'd start using more of the chat box, use more of the functions, couple of strategies. Find who the chairperson of the meeting is and tell them you've got something to say in the next meeting. Um, and so they can tee you up. So I had Lucy teeing me up today, for example, <laughs> coming up today. She's a speaker, an author. Speaker, yep. You know, have somebody tee you up or big you up. And oh yeah, I have I've got a, a, an idea I'd like to share with you, and Caroline's going to share it with us, something like that. Another thing is try and host your own meetings. Try and have a meeting offline with say three of you or four of you. Try and take control where you're in control of the meeting, because when you're in control of the meeting, you can be in control of who's speaking, and you can say, "But right, everyone mute." So unmute when, when it's your turn or, or set the agenda so you can control. Because you can, the one thing about these, this format is that you can control who is seen and who is heard at the click of a button. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Take a control. Point. And then you're in charge of things. So then it helps yeah. you find your voice. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got another question that's coming from Sylvia. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're running a training course, should you have all of them on screen? Right. It depends how many, what the context is. So rule of thumb, I would say, yes, if it's 12 people, I would say, okay, so I had 40, too many. <laughs> I, done, I, did a, I did a session with 40 people that was early on when nobody was muted. Oh, was like, really? And then it was echoing somebody who sat, I mean, Darth Vader turned up at one point. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say, for a bit of fun, yes, do have people on screen. And yes, do get people to contribute. The other great thing about having everybody on screen there is that you can see their names. 
And you could even get them to change their name. Look, I'm actually going to change my name to my hashtag. Look, just to show you how you can have a bit of fun. You can have a bit of fun, you see, with all of these um, little techniques. If I change my um, hashtag here, look, I'm going to rename myself Eyes and Teeth. You know, you can get people to, you can have fun with it. You can use some of the tools. I like that. I yeah. So you can, you can have your pet name or today's meeting. Or maybe you're in a group, so you've got the blues, the reds, and the yellows, and maybe it says on your name thing, Esther Red, or, you know, you can, you can do different things. I would say, yeah, have fun with it. I love Why that. not? Thank you. Um, so we've got another question, a few questions about backgrounds, virtual backgrounds. Is it better, this is from Melinda, <laughs> ah, I love this. have a professional real home scene in the background or use virtual backgrounds? So, and then other people saying, well, we don't have virtual backgrounds on my computer. What should I do to kind of create a nice background? Well, okay. So my answer, to my personal view, because I worked in studios for a lot of my life, unless you're in a really good, proper TV broadcast quality studio, chroma key, we used to call it chroma key, green screen, is I hate it. <laughs> I can't bear it. I remember when I worked in Anglia studio, we had this little mini green screen studio and you could kind of have hot dogs in the background. You could put whatever you want. So first of all, you're like, Ooh, look, you can do this silly stuff. Superman. Woohoo. Um, but in your, in your home environment, I've even with my Logitech camera and my, this quite good, you know, quite well lit environment, it's still not really going to look good. So I would say if you're having fun and it's for kids or it's for a novelty, fine. Get the Simpsons sofa, be in the TARDIS. A friend of mine's like always on like Thailand on an island, on a, on a desert island in Thailand. Oh, always on the beach. And somebody was in a, a, a cell the other day in prison. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, rule of thumb, I think it's kind of silly. It's fine if it's a bit silly. Um, I would say, I, I like that professional home background. <laughs> it's all about look your background will tell a story about you what story do you want to tell so i would say feng shui your background i i would get this is a white curtain it's a curtain cost 10 pounds and it's on a curtain rail if you want to have a nice colored curtain just Chuck up a curtain rail, it doesn't cost that much money. But I would absolutely think about your background, yeah. What do you think of my background, Esther? Is it I think it's a very professional home the, background. I love it. It's my posh wall for Zoom. I actually have my little Zoom thing. This is the equivalent of your uh, proper like setup. Oh, right, yes. I know that I can always rely on this wall, not having toys in it and too much clutter. It's sort of, it's in a house that has a lot of things happening, you know, children coming and going and decorations happening. This is the one wall that I can rely on, so. Well, uh, I, I think have a bit of fun with, I love it. I think it looks very professional I and mean, it looks very classy. Whereas, <laughs> I've just got a very, mine's very functional, but it, it works because of the light. Now I'm looking at the time and I absolutely know, you know, cause my background's broadcasting, my brain, you know, it has a little clock in it. So I know that we're coming up to the news. <laughs> Coming up um, on the hour, so I know that we're going to be on time and on budget today. So I would just like to say thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for contributing. Thank you for your questions, Lucy. Thank you for having me. You have been amazing. I've had so much fun as ever. It's always great to, to be involved in these sessions with you. And I have to say a massive, massive thank you for all your brilliant top eight tips that you've given us today. It has been a ball. Thank you very much everyone for joining us today and uh, we look forward to seeing you hopefully at another one of we'll do these. <laughs> okay, so give the camera a wave. Love that bye lens. Bye.